Hi, it's Paul Maunder from Production Expert, and in this video, I'm going to show you some of the functionality from a post-production perspective of Bounce Factory from Andrew Sheps. Bounce Factory essentially adds functionality to Pro Tools by allowing you to automate every aspect of the bouncing process. This includes things such as soloing and muting tracks, switching playlists, bypassing plugins, importing bounces back into the session, and subsequently exporting those bounces again in a variety of formats. The bounces can be automatically put onto new tracks or playlists, and of course they can be done online in real time or offline. It can even send you a text message when mixes are done. Of course you're likely to be doing multiple bounces, so Bounce Factory can message you as each one finishes. Bounce Factory works as part of Soundflow. If you're not familiar with this, it's a piece of software which lets you automate tedious Pro Tools tasks with macros and shortcuts. I won't spend time going into Soundflow in this video, but let's load up Shep's Bounce Factory. So from within Soundflow you can see I've got Shep's Bounce Factory installed. Click on Open App and it loads up the software. Now if we go into Pro Tools, let me just open up the video window. You can see this is a, a corporate video project where people were talking about this iPad application and it was necessary to do this in multiple languages. The original language was English, and then we did a French dub, a German dub, and we also did Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to have a look at bouncing the English, the French, and the German versions. Currently, I've created two snapshots, one for the English bounce and one for the French bounce. Each of those has different track visibility, track routing, and different tracks enabled or disabled. And let me just run a little bit of this just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with here. We know that increasing coaching occasions drives... Augmenter les opportunités de coaching OK, we're not going to spend too long watching that, but essentially it's a, a redubbed version of a, a video. Now, to give you a bit of a sense of how Bounce Factory really works, I'm going to create a snapshot for the third and final bounce which I need to do, which will be the German version. I'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit. So let me enable some tracks here. I'm going to enable these two German dub tracks and this auxiliary and then I'm going to disable this French AUX track here and these two dialogue tracks. Let's hide those and make them inactive and then I'm going to enable these, make active and actually I'm going to change the routing on these because it's set up from a previous thing but let's just click on this and say I wanted it routed to the Submaster. Okay. And perhaps even I want to change the track heights to something like that. Let's just run a little bit of this and check that that's going to work for the German dubbed version. I'll just run it from here. We know that increasing. Wir wissen, dass eine Erhöhung der Anzahl von Coaching-Gelegenheiten die Leistung verbessert. Und das okay, that seems fine. Now let's go into Bounce Factory, and I'll click Take Snapshot. Okay, and it warns me you haven't made a timeline selection, so that was my own oversight. It mentions if you make a selection before clicking OK, it will be updated now, so let's do that. I'm just going to choose to encompass the whole range of the mix. If you didn't make a selection, it will bounce from the session start to the very end of the session. But in this case, why not? Let's make a selection. Click OK. And now you can see something which on the face of it is similar to the Pro Tools bounce dialogue, but with some notable and important additions. Let's just first give it a name. This is going to be called iPad App Mix German. Okay. As within Pro Tools, you have all the usual file type options here. So I could bounce it in Broadcast WAV, MP3, or you know any of the other formats. If you wanted to, of course, you could sample rate convert it. You'll notice this session is a native 48 kilohertz mix. If I were to choose any other sample rate, for example, 44.1, notice how it's gone from green into orange. That indicates that you're not bouncing at the native sample rate. And if you do that, certain things such as import after bounce will be disabled. So let's just take a look at exactly what this is. If I was bouncing, as I normally do in post-production, at the native rate, which for most projects is 48 kilohertz, then I may choose to import the mix afterwards. And here's one of the great things about Bounce Factory. Let's say I'm not only doing multiple passes of a mix, so I could be doing multiple dubbed language versions, I might be doing a version which has no music, I might be doing a version which has no dialogue whatsoever because somebody else is going to do the dubbing, or I could be doing any number of different variants on a mix. With the Import After Bounce option enabled, this is of course going to bring that bounce mix back into the session, 
The import destination here allows you to select where it goes. Does it go onto a new track, into the clip list, or perhaps onto an existing track? So maybe you've created a track specifically for those bounces. In this case, I'm actually not going to do this, but let me just show you one other thing, which is export copy after bounce. You notice on the right hand side, we have these additional options. And when I enable export copy after bounce, this export copy section becomes active. And this is where Bounce Factory, having bounced any number of versions of a mix for you automatically and brought them back into the session, can then export those mixes again in a format of your choosing. For the purposes of this, I'm just gonna create this as it is, like this. I'll just mention briefly the fact that down here we have the option of adding a selected track solo pass. So if, for example, in a post-production scenario, you wanted to do a version which was just the dialogue, you could solo the dialogue, add that to it. You could do one which is perhaps just the sound effects. You can also do a similar thing, but by specifying which tracks need to be muted. So I could do several mute passes. And remember, once I've set this up, the whole process just runs automatically. You'll see that shortly. We also have this option, add selected track playlist pass. So we could, for example, set up different playlists on different tracks and then do different bounces with the various different playlists active. Let me click on proceed because I'm fairly happy with what I've got here. Okay, and then we get this dialog box, add snapshot to list as, you can put in a different name here. I'm gonna go with the existing name, iPad App Mix German, click okay. And this is gonna add this, you can see it's saving the session and it's looking at all the different visibility and what's enabled, what's not enabled, playlists, muting, routing. There's a lot of stuff, I'm not touching the computer. What you're seeing here is what I'm seeing at the speed at which I'm seeing it. This hasn't been sped up in post-production. Okay, we've got a list here. We've got the English version, the French version, the German version. From my point of view, this is really useful. If, for example, I want to set the session up for the mixes, but perhaps I can't do the mixes yet because there's still some work to do or there's a couple of changes to make, but I don't want to be going through this process at the end. I want to preemptively set it up and essentially automate the actual bounce process, then this is really a big time saver. Okay, let's bounce all. Do you want to delete the snapshots after bouncing? Mm, well, for now, I might need them, perhaps. I could delete them, but I'm going to keep them. Okay, and now it's going through the process of enabling and disabling and basically creating the mixes. To do this manually at this point in the mix would take a while, so now I can just go away, do whatever I want, and then I'll come back and the mixes will be done. As I mentioned earlier in the video, you can actually set Bounce Factory up so that it will send you a text message as each version of the bounce completes. So you can always keep track of its progress without having to be sat behind your computer, which is great. As you can see, this is still going. We'll come back in a second once it's complete. Okay, the mixes are now done. So let me just take a look in the Bounced Files folder. There you can see the different versions. We'll just do a quick verification, listen to a few seconds of each and just double check that we've got the routing correct and that we can indeed hear the English, French dub and German dub on each of those. We know that increasing coaching occasions drives better performance. Okay, seems fine. I'll take a listen to the French. Skip ahead a little bit. Augmenter les opportunités de coaching. Great, and then the German one. That's great, and Bounce Factory automated all of those processes, meaning I didn't have to sit here at the computer. And actually, while I was making this video, Andrew got in touch about some new features which he's just added, so let's take a quick look at those now. Okay, so I've got another session open here, and let's say this was an episodic TV show where the bounce requirements are pretty similar from one episode to the next. I'm just making some additional passes here so you can see that in addition to the main full mix, there's also a solo pass, which is just dialogue, a mute pass, which is music in effects, and another mute pass, which is dialogue, music in effects, or DME. And just for illustration, let's also add a solo pass, which I'll make voiceover only. So I'm just gonna solo this track. Click Add Selected Track, Solo Pass. Maybe I'll just call it Episode 1, VO Only. And you can see that's at the bottom of the list. Of course, I could click on the Proceed button and then bounce all of this out, but the new functionality is at the bottom here. So we've got Load Passes from Last Snapshot, Load Passes from File, Save Passes to File, Rename Pass, and Delete. I want to reuse these bounce variations on each subsequent episode, so I'll click on Save Passes to File. Okay, and just for now, I'm gonna put it on the desktop. 
I'll just call this demo show. Okay, save that. I won't go through the bounce process again for now, but let's quickly go into the session for episode two and see how we can use this. Right, we're in the session, so I'm going to click on take snapshot. Maybe I'm not too bothered about a timeline selection for now. I'm just going to give this a provisional name. So let's just say this is episode two, full mix. And this is where I'm going to load those different passes of the mix from the file. So click on this, find the file that we saved, choose. And it tells me four mix pass entries were loaded. Okay, great. You can see them here. And one thing I would need to do would be to rename these from EP1 to EP2. At the time of making this video, Andrew's actually working on a batch rename feature which will allow you to do exactly that. So you can easily replace relevant parts of the bounce file names all at once. I've got some example screenshots to illustrate how this will work. You'll click rename pass. That then opens this dialog, which allows you to find something in the name and replace it with something else. So in the example shown here, we want to find the EP1 text and replace it with EP45. You'll then click on rename and sure enough, it's done. By the time you see this video, this feature should be available. If you want some more in-depth tutorials on Shep's Bounce Factory, take a look at Andrew's YouTube channel. There's some really useful stuff on there. Thanks for watching.